All right, so uh, our goal again is to um, import your art into Animate and start to draw in Animate. Um, everything has been approved on the Identity Deck sets uh, that have the boxes around it. And Ava, if you're jumping in here, uh, you have been approved to move forward. There's some comments from the students, so check that out. Um, and so there was a, a video for you to follow for importing into Animate and draw by carving. Um, that is on this page here and it kind of walks you through the process. And I, I also demoed this in class the other day. So I'd like to ask if there's any questions about drawing using shapes and then carving by pushing with the black arrow tool and manipulating with the white arrow tool those points. Um, is, are there any questions about that right now? Then I would like to ask a question if there's a, uh, are there any questions about using the pencil tool? Remember, we talked about using the pencil tool to, to draw with in class the other day um, and then manipulating. And we're doing that instead of using the brush tool, the brush tool creates shapes. We want to have lines with only points that run through the lines. Are there any questions about using pencil tools? I do. Okay, Erica. Um, so I was playing around with it and for some reason, I couldn't smooth out the line. Like mm -hmm. the entirety of the pencil smoothing was grayed out to me. Oh. And no matter what I did, I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. I can help so. you to solve that problem. And I think it might be helpful if everybody sees that because it, it might be a common thing. So if you don't mind, Erica, if you could share your screen and then I can. I, I wasn't prepared for that. <laughs> Sorry. No. I didn't have it up. Okay. Uh, do you, um, are you at your computer right now? Sometimes when you're working in Animate, the tools feel like they're not going to do what you need them to do. And so the key to that is kind of understanding how to use the tools and pushing them to, <laughs> to do what they need to do. I'm going to share um, my other screen right now so that I can kind of talk through that and just do a general troubleshooting with all of you. Um, and kind of do a check and see how, how things are going. I would like everybody to open up Animate and do a screenshot of where you are today um, and add that to a slide after the, um, let's see. Uh, so in the, let me share this screen again. So for example, here's Ava's, uh, so in between, so it would be after your sketches, um, it would be a page called process. And it's just right now a screenshot. I really would like to see a screenshot that has uh, your layer names too. I wanna see where, what that looks like for you. So let me show you an example. Um, okay, so in this example, this is my, this is my stage, that black area or gray area up above here. This is called the stage. And, and anything that I'm like working on, I want to see the full area that you're working on. I would also like to see the layers that you're working on. Specifically, there's a, and I'll show you from my file, there's a section in the file called Art Goes Here. Um, now, all of these layers are, are what, what I have essentially in the Art Goes Here section. I want to see how you're layering your file. I don't want people to work in a way that would feel comfortable for you to work in Photoshop. So in Photoshop, we would have lines and then under that we would have fills and they would be on separate layers. Here, lines and fills are on one thing. So that's an important distinction from what you might be used to in, in uh, Photoshop. Another thing for you to consider doing is to have elements that you might want to eventually move or enlarge be on a different layer. So for example, this character's head is on a different layer. The wings are on different layers. So you can see I've got um, the sketch, white. This is the drawing, um, snow white lightning. So actually this does not, this is actually showing sort of my 
layering. But if I show you, um, I see your note there, Erica, that's cool. Let me share my other screen and show you what I want for your, your screenshot. So I'm in animate right now. I'm gonna hit Z for zoom and then alter options to zoom out. Or you can click on fit to stage over here in the corner, fit in window. So that, that is helpful. And you want to have these arrowed down. Um, I have it under my art, but I think that um, there was just a layer that was called art goes here. Basically, I want to be able to see that you're working in layers. So I've got the hand is one layer right now. And if I were to do his, his face, like I will probably want that to be on one layer. To get that on one layer, I'm going to select it and then Control or Command X. And I'm gonna make a new layer. So I've cut it and I'm gonna do face. And then I'm going to click here onto that layer. I have to click on the layer, otherwise it might pop me into somewhere else. Make sure that the layer is unlocked because it might not go to the right spot. And then in um, both in Photoshop and in Animate, we use this command or control shift V. That's paste in place. The, that's the shortcut for it, but edit, paste in place. Control shift V or command shift V. That's the shortcut. That will put it right where you had it. Um, I'm gonna hit V, which is the move tool and click off to get rid of the selection. So basically now I would just want a, um, a screenshot of this thing that I have, whatever process you're at, wherever you're at. Even if you just have your import, I wanna see where everybody's at just to get an overview uh, before we move on today. And you're gonna put that onto your slides uh, to be able to give me a view of that. Okay, any questions about grabbing that screenshot? Okay, if we were in a classroom, what we would do is everybody would just open their computers, we'd walk around. This is the version that we do it for online. So I'm gonna stop my share because it looks like Erica is ready to share. And if you could, uh, um, so Erica, can you just do that again on your, on your, on your yeah. sketch layer, which was really your layer three, um, you yeah. went to properties and you clicked on opacity, brought that from 88% to 30%. So that's cool. Yep. Go ahead and click off. Um, so the other thing that you probably want removed, Erica, is this um, so the symbol the, thing. The symbol. So yeah, that's uh, one of these. Yeah. Why don't you take this? This is this line. I want you to right. grab that line and pull it down to like about here. Uh, yeah, I'm like that. Oh, I can't. You, you might just need like to that. not be where my picture, my drawing is. I gotta go like there that. There you go. Yep. And, I, and then I gotta pull this down. Yep. There we go. Okay. Now go up to, and I don't, oh, it's here. Um, go fit in window. Click this thing. Oh, See there this? it is. Ooh, I lost my mouse. Oh, there we go. Click that. There. Click um click that that uh this arrow. Oh okay. Fit in window. Okay. This one is the center. Okay, so um now we just see everything and it's called an index. So click on that arrow to arrow it down. Good. And center, so turn the eyeball off for you. Okay. All right. Now you'll be okay. able to work. Now you could copy that if you needed to to move it around. Okay, so you're in a really good place right here. And it's actually a really good example of how to show what, what to do next. What I would do is I would um, click on this lock tool to lock everything. It will lock everything when you click that. Okay, do you see how it did that? Now yep, we and want- And then unlock the thing that you're gonna draw where you wanna work, yes. Good, okay. So um, now that we have that, you can arrow that back up and mm -hmm. um, bring this back up to give you more room because we want to be able to have your image be about that big. Oh, this is weird. Yeah. You got to go like that and then do this. There you go. OK, cool. Um, this is such a lovely drawing. I can't wait to see how it comes together. So um, 
first thing to do is to kind of grab your pencil tool. Um, your mm -hmm. pencil tool lives right here. So click on it, you have it. Um, and over in your tools, let's see. Okay, so this is your, this is your color. Let's switch yeah. it so you have black or some sort of dark color right there. Good. And by the way, it looks like Erica already has uh, the color swatch set in that file. Do you see that? Now, if you had opened up a different file, um, it might have come with a, just like the standard rainbow RGB color set. Erica, did you download the swatch or did it come with my... I didn't download the swatch. I actually like manually put them in. <laughs> Each individually? Yeah, it wasn't too hard. No, yeah. there's a much easier way to do it. So let me show, walk everybody through that. Oh my goodness. Um, okay, so this is in the demos. And so let me have everybody do this with yours. So you should have Animate open right now. And um, let's go to swatches. Click on that, Erica. Okay. Yep. And see, it looks like you brought exactly the one that I have. So what I want you to do is click on this, this right here that um, I'll, I'll clear it. And then what you do is you load, um, I'm sorry, replace colors. So everybody uh, are you following along with me on this part. And we're going to have a recording. Did you already download the .clr file? Uh, I don't think so. Uh huh. You know I don't think so. Not yet. First of all, let me ask everybody in this group, does your color swatch set look like this? It does. It doesn't. Yeah. Some of you, it doesn't. If it doesn't, then we need to make sure that it looks like this. This is the universal color swatch set. And actually, I think the one that Erica has is the, is the old one. We have a little bit of a newer one. So what okay. I'd like for you all to do is hit cancel, Erica, and minus, yep. minus this so that you can um, Zoom, you know, we're going to go to the internet and I'm going to share my screen. All right. Okay. I'm going to stop sharing them. Yep. I'll force you to stop sharing is what will happen. Okay. So um, can you see my screen here? Um, probably. Okay. Um, I'm going to go to the course site and into color for the cards. And I had you do um, several of these steps uh, for this class already, create the Adobe color scheme. You have done that. Um, and then this was the color palette. And then this is the ICU universal color palette. Did I ask you to do step two, everybody, or not yet? OK, cool. Let's do this together. We can just do it together really fast. So if I click on this link, I'm going to put this link in the chat for you. Let me just, I'll, I'll give you the link that you need when, when it's time. So let me just take us through this. Basically, we're looking for color to be accessible for red, green, colorblind. And the color palette that we're going to um, give you gives you that capability. This link right here, this button, is how to download the universal color palette. So I'll put this in the chat. Um, so grab that link from the chat and click on this download universal color palette. That will bring you, oh, Lord. I have a CLR file, which this is not. So I wanna just double check on something. So what, what you just looked at was an image uh, that's a JPEG image. Is that what you grabbed, Erica? Did you grab it from this? I thought you were talking about the col color swatches we did. Yeah, the Adobe color swatches, like five of them. You put yours yeah. in. Yeah. yeah. Um, so this is the, the color swatch set. And one of the things that you, you can see from like my example that I was showing, this color set, which is actually still in my file, this is, this is a brighter color set, and we'll want to eventually switch over to the newer color set. But I might need to prep myself a little bit better because this is this is not the .clr, and I have a .clr file. Here it is. Get the CLR color swatch file. Let me make sure that this is the actual one. 
yeah, universal color swatches. Okay, so it is on the color thing. I'll put it, this in the chat. Everybody go ahead and grab that and click download. And I'll wait to um, see if you are all downloading it right now with me. Okay. Um, so in this process, I'm going to now share my, my other screen. Um, okay, so I'm on I'm back in animate for myself, right? Are you all seeing my card sketch in animate? Okay. So um, just like Erica was in that swatch set, if I go to swatches, I run a little bit of a different um, set up than Erica was. But basically, if you don't see swatches, which is often in this right hand area, you can go to window and then pull swatches up. This color swatch set is uh, um, is actually the, the older version. Um, I can go to replace colors and uh, go to my downloads and click universal color swatches slash animate.clr, that's the file. A .clr file is a swatch file for animate. That's what it is. It's not like an image and it's gonna populate it and it'll look like that. It's a little bit different. This is the more, more um, advanced one. Um, it's hard to make it fit in that form that the other one is, but this is, this is the correct one. This will kind of clue us in to know that that's the right color swatch set. So Erica, you you had likely grabbed your your four swatches from the um, Adobe Color Set, right? Did you pick the color yeah. there? Is that how you did it? You added the swatches? Yeah, I added them because, well, through a scenario, I couldn't log into my Adobe account because it's through my dad. So mm -hmm. I just sort of like took screenshots. Yeah, uh, there's a couple ways you can add swatches. So let me show you the, the kind of preferred way because it is an Adobe Color swatch set. So I'm gonna share my screen. Um, that is the, um, let's see, I'll share screen one. Okay, so I'm back to, whoops, I gotta double click. So you probably see the word download on here, is that right? Okay, so back over to this color set. Um, this is adding the universal color swatches to anime. There's a video on how to do that but uh, add your Adobe color scheme to the slides. Um, click add to swatches. This is, this is what I was talking about. Um, when you find a color, you can add it to your swatches. You can also import the color scheme into animate. Did you all do this and watch this video? Okay, so this video covers that. Um, so watch this if you need to still add your color swatches to this. I'm just gonna click play and go to 4.30 on that so that we can talk about what that looks like. Um, yeah, for me, my animate wouldn't accept the CLR files. <clears throat> so I had everything downloaded into my folder for the class, but oh. um, they wouldn't cooperate with each other. Okay, so an alternate way to do it is to, um, to screenshot this, grab them, and bring them into into animate and and click and add them into the swatches. Do you want me to show you that? Do you need to see that walk around, that work around? I mean, otherwise, Actually, gonna... for me. do you need that demo? No, those those work for me. Okay, so no one needs that demo. I'm gonna skip that then. Okay, um, so basically, let me let me take a share to um, this other screen, back to the identity deck template. Um, so if I wanted to add this pink to a swatch, like this is this is like, ooh, that's a new color and I don't think that it's in here, even though I do. Um, I would click on I, which is the shortcut for the picker and I'd pick this color and you can see it actually just added to the swatches right there. That, that does do it. The other thing that you can do is as you're working on a color, oops, command Z, I've just changed the color twice. I'm gonna click off by clicking V, click off. I need it to be deselected. 
So now if I find a color and I like it, like I really like this color, it's not a part of mine, I can click add to the swatches. That swatch set is now in here. You can see that it, that's been added. If I'm gonna reuse colors multiple times, I'll wanna keep adding these to there. That will help you. Um, okay, so that's kind of that. You can also add gradients and, and the other things too. Um, so I think I've covered this idea of let's get the right color in. Um, okay, so Erica, you're gonna grab that pencil and you're going to um, go to your, uh, we just need a, a good color inside of it. So you're on mm -hmm. pencil and uh, we need to see, so this is your, your stroke color, you've already selected that. So can you just mm -hmm. make a line, like let's see a line like right there, what happens when you make a line? What's going on? So what's, what's the problem with it? Um, it's just, it wouldn't be the way I wanted. And so I try to mess around with the smoothing to see if it's, I can do it differently. Your smoothing and is the issue, okay. Um, so can you, can you uh, grab the mouse tool or this, right? Um, do, do the drawing, draw the, draw the line again. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Okay. I see that you're working really fast, which may work for you when you're doing drawing traditionally and drawing in Photoshop. In Animate, it does help to go a little bit slower. So I, can you make that same line like over on the other side, but not so fast? Okay. Did you see that it popped into place? Do you see a little bit of a difference with that? Yeah. Okay, now I want you to grab the, the V tool. Let's click on that, click on it, and now click on your that. Um, good, so you can see okay. it's moving around. Okay, so stop doing that. Just double click on it and you'll select it. So click it and you didn't get everything, so I want you to double click it. Okay, now I want you to go to this tool here and click twice, one, two. Do you see how that smoothed it? That process of doing the drawing and then grabbing that tool and clicking one, two times on it will be a helpful process to kind of smooth things out. Um, okay. I is that, that different than what you were doing? Uh, yeah, well, it just said pencil smoothing. And so I assume that would fix a lot of my issues. <laughs> It does. So I think that there still is something that's going on that's a little bit weird for you. So click on the pencil one more time for me. And um, good. And um, click, uh, just draw another line somewhere. Okay. So what just happened there was it, it, it made it look like really edgy, right? And that's mm -hmm. because it's like this. Click on that and hold it down and you always want smooth on. So do you wanna watch for that? Not always, but you want, most of the time you're gonna want, you're gonna want that smooth tool and not this tool, okay? Okay. Um, so here, smoothing, take this up to one. Oh, it's, okay, that was- that so I think it's because issue. you were maybe on a different smooth tool than you needed to be. Take it all the way to 100, let's see where, what happens. And if you can function like that. Now, um, draw. Lovely, keep going. Okay. So that didn't, that smoothed too much, right? So you mm -hmm. may need it to come to here or something. Okay. So get back and you'll find it, but I don't want you to live down here. It's gonna to be too many points, but that looks pretty good. Now, mm -hmm. the size of your, um, can you grab this and pull it down? We wanna see all those pencil options. I think your stroke size is, oh, stroke size is up here. Yeah. So do you remember we wanted two and four? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I when think you... one is like one of the defaults because they keep putting it on two and four and it's not staying. Okay. So um, you've this is good and and also you for everybody you can select select everything by clicking. You can either like box over the whole thing with the with the V tool or you can okay. click here and then change everything to two point. Okay. Okay, so give that a try because everything's one point right now. Click that and you can see it got darker so it's selected. And now um, 
what happened to your pencil line. Let me clear. Um, we need to go to object and now click on two. I like to just type it in there because otherwise it it doesn't. So click on it. Disney. Doesn't even let me do that. Mine's weird. Okay. okay. So, but you are allowed to drag it. Yeah. Okay. Good. So um, now click off, like click off the screen, and you'll see that it's a little bit lighter. Okay. Or you still have it selected. So hit V to click to deselect and click off. Okay. That's the that's what the two is. Four is going to be a little bit thicker. Now, when you do zooming and everything, it's going to kind of change. But when it is at the actual size, it's correct. One more thing okay. I'd like for you to do. Can you click on that line one more time and let's check it? Good. So strokes, uh, the scale, we need this to be set to none. And I want to just check that. So change that to none. And everybody should be setting it to none. And I just want to check that on my um on my rule thank you erica for sharing that and so we were just setting the scaling to normal uh on the line and we got it all figured out there so are there any other questions that we can help solve kind of technically right now probably a lot of you have the same kind of questions all right so we're in sean's animate it's not cooperating so let's see why what are you trying to do sean and how can we solve it um well i'm just yeah, I'm trying to, maybe I'm just selecting stuff wrong. First, like the downloads, like Secular One and the Color Safe and the Universal Color, that all the CLRs wouldn't transfer over. And then right now I'm trying to get into properties and object and switch, but it's- Yep, not. I know why that's happening. So um, let me annotate. So you're not able to do anything right now because in this art goes here layer, which is what you're on, let's unlock it. So you're going to click on the unlock. Okay. And you need a keyframe for where you're going to go. So I want you to click right inside of where my yellow thing is. F6 is the keyboard shortcut, but you're going to go to insert or control click on your pen. So you would right click if you're using the pen or go to insert or right click on your mouse or trackpad. Okay, did you do it? Did you do the shortcut? Yeah, Let me, I did the shortcut. You did the shortcut? Okay, so what we've got here is a, is a keyframe. So it, take this slider, this is the timeline, take it back so it's right over top. Good, click there again and uh, that's, your keyframe, now you'll be able to do stuff. Like you didn't have a blank paper for you to add this information into. Um, so some of this might be repetitive to some of you and you can just start working on your project as we kind of like talk through some of this stuff. That's what I would I would encourage you to do. Um, and then we'll, we'll kind of troubleshoot for a lot of people here and then um, eventually we're gonna break out into smaller great big breakout groups and I'll help you much more individually. Sean, can you, there's more problems than that though. And I think many people will have the same thing. Can you go back to sharing? Okay, so um, now what was your issue? Like just try to do a drawing on that um, by, oh, you don't have the pencil tool so this, this is something that I might not have shown in the demo. Click on this arrow, yep, and then drag that pencil, take it and put it by the line tool or by the brushes. That's helpful. Yep, and just drop it there. You can take it and drop it up there. You can move these things around. You kind of have to get it so it has that vertical line is what happens for the move. If it if you hover over it, it looks like a square blue on top of another thing, that means you'd have to control click it. So kind of just go next to the line is gonna be the trick to it. Now grab it right in the middle of it, click on it and pull it. 
and go right next. <laughs> it's being really stubborn, isn't it? There, yeah, I think you'll just needle it around. Okay. Um, let's just leave it there right now. I think that'll be fine. <laughs> and uh, basically, um, let's go to your swatches. Do you have your, your swatches loaded? Let's see what your swatches look like. Okay, so this is the old color palette. You'll 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 do the replace colors with that dot CLR that I showed you. Um, I recommend still doing that. But for right now, let's go to color and just choose a dark blue or black or brown. So click here, click, click on the green up here where I'm pointing at. Click good. Choose. And you kind of click on that green and then that's going to pop up and you're going to click on the dark thing. Click, <laughs> let me remove my drawings. Click on the green dot. Yep. Now go to one of these darks. Yep. Any of them. You can click any of those darks that you want to have for a line. Okay. Now do a line drawing with your pencil. Good. Okay, we just want to check the smoothing on it. So you have this correct. You don't have object drawing. Go to properties and uh, that's too small. Remember we want two and we want four. So you want to change that one to two and kind of work consistently in that. But the main thing that you, that the reason why you weren't able to do anything is you didn't have a keyframe didn't have a blank keyframe. So you always need something to be able to draw on. It would be like drawing in the air because there's nothing there for you to put something into. Okay. Okay. Now I really want to point out that it's really important for us to not use the brush tool for this project. If any of you start using the brush tool, you're going to have to like go back and redo it. And I know that that's not really fun, but the, the thing that we're learning is pencil and line. Those are the, the things that we're working with, okay? I'm gonna clear these. Um, any other questions coming from you, Sean? Right um, now? Yeah, just, just the downloads when we get some time. Yeah, well, we can cover that individually, I think. Yeah, 